Mr Nesbitt has been given leave to make a statement on the mass shooting in Orlando, which fulfils the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If, others, if other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places con and continuing to do so. All members called will have up to three minutes to speak on the subject. I would remind members that I shall take any points of order on this or any other matter. On, I shall not take any point of order until the item of business has finished. I call Mr Nesbitt. Mr Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, we return to the House uh, after the weekend, a time traditionally set aside for us to pursue our passions, our, our lifestyle choices, whether it be the arts, culture, religion, sport, uh, recreation. Uh, I wish I could be standing here congratulating Rory Best and the Irish rugby team on their phenomenal success in South Africa at the weekend, or welcoming Northern Ireland's return to the finals of a major football tournament, although that has been overshadowed not just by the result, but by the, the tragic death uh, of Darren Rogers, which we will hear about in greater detail uh, in a moment. Uh, as somebody who has lost a friend uh, on a holiday in continental Europe, I, I have some understanding of the shock of such a sudden loss of realizing that uh, somebody you thought was going to be in your life forever uh, was no longer in your life at all. A feeling which is being replicated in the United States in no fewer than 50 families uh, because of the attack uh, in the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, a single gunman killing 50 people, injuring 53, some of whom, as we speak, are fighting uh, for their lives. An act described by President Obama uh, as both an act of terror uh, and an act of hate. Uh, two things we know only too well uh, in this country. Uh, very struck, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, by the quote uh, attributed to the gunman's father who said that he had become very angry uh, when he saw two men kissing. Well, what a way to express your anger, uh, Mr. Speaker, 50 people dead. Uh, what a lesson to us all uh, about intolerance uh, in our society and how we must not permit it uh, to infect uh, how we think. Uh, we have our own special relationship, I think, uh, in Northern Ireland, Mr. Speaker, with the United States, uh, a history that goes back centuries. Uh, many of our citizens holiday in Florida uh, many Floridians and Americans come on holiday here, and of course many Americans invest in Northern Ireland. Uh, so we have a lot at stake in terms of the relationship uh, that we have with the United States. So I would like to, with your permission, Mr. Speaker, ask you to write to President Obama uh, on behalf of this Assembly, on behalf of this House, uh, to express our shock but also our solidarity uh, with all the people of the United States uh, at this shocking and tragic time. I call Mr. Trevor Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Can I also raise, um, I mean, it has been, a, I'm sure it's a very painful weekend for the families of those involved. And my heartfelt thanks, uh, sorry, my heartfelt apologies go to, to those families as I think about them over the weekend. I mean, as the previous speaker has said, I mean, something like this, something, similar events have happened, albeit not in the same numbers in our shores here in Northern Ireland. It wasn't right here, and, it, and I mean, indeed, it never been right, and it's, it's been proven never to be right. And I mean, there's nothing we can do in terms of words of comfort that we can give to the families today um, of those people who were brutally murdered, and I mean, that's what it was, brutally murdered at the weekend, other than give them prayerful support. And I mean, and I obviously uh, offer, uh, suggest to members to keep them, them and their families in their prayers over the coming days and weeks and uh, uh, ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Mr. Sean Lynch. I'll get the can call you. And again, I want to express my shock and horror at the, the multiple deaths and the 53 injuries. And my heartfelt condolences go to the family and also on behalf of my party. These people were targeted simply because they were gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender. This attack was brought into uh, sharp focus that despite moves towards equality, LGBT people in the West or a massive, have massive, massive uh, issues. The perpetrator of this murder, of murder's event was not born homophobic. He was taught it. 
We as political leaders, and I agree with much of what the, the members have said, we must stand together on this issue and face down homophobic behaviour. We must send out a message to people to, at every level, human beings we value uh, as equal. We also must, the fact that people cannot live and get married here is a problem and that is wrong. We need to change the law so that all citizens are treated equally. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I thank Mr. Nesbitt for bringing this matter of the day um, to the House? I think it's extremely important that we stand with people all across the world in uh, revulsion uh, to what has happened in uh, Orlando. Uh, it is just shocking to see that so many people uh, could be gunned down in such a way, and even more shocking to see that so much hatred uh, can reside within one. Uh, person. Of course, we've seen this type of hatred uh, being acted out against our gay community right across the world. I think of places like Uganda uh, and in other parts of the world where gay people uh, are not treated uh, the way that they should. It isn't for me or for us to talk about the internal laws of the United States, Mr. Speaker, but I think it's important uh, that our friends in the U.S. hear um, that we cannot understand how somebody, anybody, can get their hands on automatic weapons uh, and use them in this way. I think it's important for us uh, to make that point. Uh, it's also important, Mr. Speaker, that we don't meet, meet hate, hate with hate, uh, that we meet it uh, with love, and that we don't give sucker uh, to the base instinct that has been so prevalent uh, within U.S. politics uh, in recent times. Uh, all of us uh, need to show uh, minorities in our community that they can play a full and equal part in our everyday lives. We here and right across the world need to ensure that the gay community can feel equal and full citizens and we have to do everything that we can and change whatever law that we have to change to make sure that happens. Thank you. Call Mrs. Naomi Law. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, and I would like to associate myself uh, with the comments that have been made by others and to thank um, Mike Nesbitt for bringing this matter to the House. I think anyone who has read and heard the horror of the last moments of those who died in the Pulse nightclub and those who were injured could not fail and be moved. This was a horrendous, a brutal, a profoundly homophobic terrorist attack, and it should be condemned by all right-thinking people. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families and the friends of those who have been murdered. They are also with those who have been injured, and also with the LGBT community more widely. For we should be under no illusion, Mr. Speaker, that gay clubs are not only places for fun and for enjoyment, they are also safe spaces for members of our community who often feel afraid, intimidated, threatened and ostracised. And when such spaces are violated in this way, the ripples of fear are much wider than in the immediate vicinity. They ripple out amongst the gay community right across the globe. And so I want to stand not just in solidarity uh, with those in Orlando, with those in the United States, but also um, with those globally who are persecuted for their sexuality. It is vital that the attack is now properly investigated, and whatever the warped motivation of the individual who launched that attack, um, it is important that what we replace this homophobia with is not another form of bigotry. Um, and that we keep our marks uh, temperate um, in that regard. Our response must be to stand against homophobia, against terrorism and against violence of any kind. Our response must be to stand for the values of an open, liberal and tolerant democracy and redouble our efforts to build that both here at home and also abroad. And I think that will be the best tribute to those who have lost their lives in this horrendous attack. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Jim Allister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I join in the condemnation of this horrendous attack. Uh, yet again, the Western world has been demonstrated to be so vulnerable to Islamist terrorism, and that's what it was. And those who seek to cloak it as otherwise 
uh, are doing the Western world no service. It is quite clear that within our society there are those who have come to li live amongst us who share no values, no common cause of interest, no respect for the sanctity of human life, uh, and that they are prepared in the cause, be it a perverted view or otherwise, of their cause to visit the most horrendous terror upon society. And it needs to be called out for what it is and condemned for what it is. Uh, and I certainly think that we in the West are particularly vulnerable now to these uh, sleeper terrorists of Islamic, uh, Islamic persuasion who are visiting the horrors uh, of their viewpoint upon us. And so I condemn that and I uh, think and pray for those uh, so suddenly bereaved by this horror. Uh, and just as we in this province have lived through the horrors of terrorism, be it Grey Steel or Le Mans or King's Mills or anywhere else, so we know the vile cruelty of terrorism which comes without justification in any cause. Call Mr. Raymond McCann. Mr. Speaker, I of course associate myself with the remarks which have been made so far regarding the horror and distress which we all will have felt at the news from Florida uh, last night. The, this terrible atrocity is a reminder that despite all the social advances and changes in the legislative framework over recent years in this part of the world, although we haven't completed the journey yet, and all around the world, the fact is that uh, LGBT people still face uh, a hatred, they still face violence. Uh, Uganda has been mentioned, and anyone who looks at the uh, background to the treatment of LGBT people in uh, Uganda and the killings uh, going on there are, will be aware of the extent of the problem, not just in the United States, but uh, elsewhere. I welcome the statement made last night by LGBT uh, against Islamophobia, which appealed an international organization, which appealed the people not to allow this atrocity to be used to whip up hatred against any section of the community, and in particular, not to allow it to be used to intensify the Islamophobia which is being spread in the United States, including by very powerful people. I regard it as ominous that one of the presumptive presidential candidates in the United States last night issued a statement announcing that he will be expressing his forthright views in a major speech on Orlando tonight. We wait to hear what he has to say, but it would be foolish uh, of any of us to imagine that this atrocity is not going to be used for nefarious purposes by people who are peddlers of hate to exactly the same extent as are the Islamic fundamentalist ideologues who are behind the thinking uh, of those who perpetrated uh, this atrocity. I think it is also a relevant to mention, given that reference has been made to people from other cultures coming here among us, to point to the fact that the presumed perpetrator of the Orlando atrocity was American-born. He did not come from anywhere but from the local neighborhood. It is also the case to keep in mind that Western forces do not simply come among people of Muslim lands, but actually come above them in drones or in aeroplanes and have been massacring, massacring thousands of Muslims over recent years. That is not in any way by one iota or a sliver of one percent a justification for what happened in Orlando, but it is part of the context in which we could understand it. We should be against all hatred and all killing, no ask, matter where it comes from. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.